Midwin, I got to know, how are you feeling? How is your soul I feeling am in this ecstatic. moment? I am ecstatic. I am ecstatic. Listen, um, I'm about to pour me some Pinot Noir in honor yes. of our, for, our former first lady, Michelle Obama, because that was clearly the category today. Yes, Miss it Lee was. showed up in cranberry goodness. Yes. Pinot Noir <laughs> is today's category item, and that is precisely what I will be pouring myself this evening. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, there's something I want to chop it up with you about, but I want to play um, a clip. Keep my mic on, because we're not going to hear the whole thing, of Vice President Kamala Harris being sworn in. Let's listen to this. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. I, Kamala Davy Harris, do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. That I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office on which I am about to enter. The duties of the office upon which I am about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. All right. So I want to say this, then I want you to take it, uh, Midwin. Yesterday, we had someone who called in, a uh, black woman, who said that Kamala Harris, and I'm paraphrasing here, does not represent her uh, because she is a lighter skinned black woman. And she wanted to see someone else um, be in that role. And I just, and the show was about to end and I really couldn't really get that much into it. But I do want to say this, that Kamala Harris is a black woman. And you have plenty of folks who look at Ben Carson, look at Clarence Thomas. They are not lighter skinned folks and they are clearly anti-black. Look at Diamond and Silk. Look at Candace Owens. Uh, I think in this moment, I understand how colorism operates. Lord knows I do. I, I get my privilege as a lighter skinned guy. I understand that. But as I touched on yesterday, Kamala Harris is there because she earned it. She's not there because she didn't earn it. And when we get caught up in that, in these politics, you know, Ben Carson is married to a black woman. And look at the kind of work that he's done. So Kamala Harris, right now, she is our black woman vice president. She is an HBCU grad. She is a Howard grad. And I just ask of folks uh, that we, and I understand trauma and I understand hurt because we, we have a lot of hurt when it comes to this kind of issue. But this is not some untalented person who just got there because of how she looked. She's earned it. And yeah, I no. Kind of yeah, no, you're that. right. I mean, Midwin, her, Midwin, please, you take it. Yeah, no, I mean, her resume is just um, impeccable in the sense that it is packed with experience. And it's packed with hard-earned experience. I mean, when you consider the fact that she was the district attorney of uh, San Francisco, she had to run for that and she had to win that election. She was the state attorney general for California, uh, the largest uh, state in our union, representing millions of people. I think there are about 40 million people living in the state of California and she won. She won that statewide election. And then on top of that, she won for senator. Uh, and, and also won also a statewide election in California to become only the second Black woman to ever serve in the Senate. So her path has been remarkable, but it is clear that no one handed her anything, particularly since just about every one of her accolades were accolades that she achieved, having to do the hard work, having to run, and having to be elected. Now, I know colorism, um, uh, is an issue in our community. Um, and just like you said, you know, you're a light-skinned uh, brother. I, I am not a light-skinned woman. Um, I definitely have been victim of colorism. I've been victim of colorism from white people, and I've also been victim of colorism from Black people. Um, however, I think it's important for us to now start focusing on substance, 
um, and who actually has the substance to do the work on our behalf. You mentioned, for example, Ben Carson, Diamond, Diamond and Sill, Clarence Thomas, who is you know, a Supreme Court justice. These are black people, but they do not have the substance in terms of doing the work to advance um, um, our rights, to advance policy that is helpful to black people. In fact, I would argue that they work to, to do the opposite, to support and advance policy that is harmful to black people. So, the, the tone of a black person's skin does not necessarily determine whether or not they are about uplifting black people and supporting policy that makes the lives of black people better. So I just want to caution people to, to pay more attention to the substance and to the content and, and look at uh, where people stand on issues. Look at the work that they've done to advance certain policy and certain laws and put them into practice and judge them on that, not on something so um, um, uh, fr frivolous as the tone of one's complexion. I agree. And I think uh, feeding into that, especially with someone like, like uh, Vice President uh, Kamala Harris, we're doing what they what they want us to do. You know, they're they're looking for division. They're looking yes. for ways to tear us apart. They're looking yeah. for ways for us to attack her before she's even gotten started. So I think that we uh, listen. I'm going to be frank here. The way that you see uh, white evangelicals uh, protect Trump, uh, I think we have to protect Kamala Harris and un, uh, and, and still hold her accountable. Of, of course. course, we're not going to be delusional. We're not going to be like the other side, but yeah. we have be protective as well, especially if we're going to the basis of, is she this enough? Is she that enough? That's just not fair. And we, we just can't, we just can't do that. So I just wanted to take a moment to, because I got some feedback from that online and it was just, again, the show was ending. And I just wanted to take a moment just to say that, I just how important it is to acknowledge that, that there are people who are browner than her and they are creating dam damage right now. Damage. Right now. Clarence Thomas is one of the most powerful black men in the world. That is deeply and he couldn't even bring himself to the inauguration of a black uh, woman <laughs> i am ad i am admitted to the supreme court of the united states as an attorney to argue before the supreme court and when i was sworn in 14 years ago clarence thomas as the only black person on the bench was asleep wow Yes, a group of wow. black women being sworn in and admitted to the Supreme Court of the United States and all the justices are sitting up there on the dais, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, we were sworn in by Chief Justice John Roberts and Clarence Thomas never even looked our way. So, mm. and he's dark skin. Exactly, exactly. So, there you right. go.